you today is because I've been hearing a lot about HIV and I've been reading about it as well. And I was just curious if you could explain what exactly HIV is, the life cycle, and, and I've heard that it's a retrovirus, but I don't know what that means, so I was wondering if you could explain that to me today. Sure. Retrovirus basically means that the genome of the virus itself is made out of RNA, right? So um, the HIV itself, as far as when we think about it as a retrovirus, it has then two RNA genomes that is present inside of the cell, mm -hmm. and this genome is then protected by a couple of different features right here. One, which is this outer envelope, which also has some surface proteins that will uh, GP120 and GP41, which then interact with the host cell. And then it, inside of it, it's, it's further protected by these two sets of proteins, matrix proteins, as well as capsid proteins, which then surround the RNA genome, as well as the proteins inside of it that will help with facilitate initial entry into the cell. Mm -hmm. And what type of cells do does HIV attack? So HIV broadly attacks a group of cells known as CD4 cells. And so CD4 cells basically are distinguished by the presence of a CD4 receptor. CD4 cells are immune cells, um, specifically of two different types, T cells as well as macrophages. And so the CD4 receptors help basically these CD4 cells recognize foreign pathogens and are able to activate it. And so HIV, basically what it does is that it recognizes the CD4 receptor using this protein, GP120. And basically what that allows it to do is that it allows it to undergo a conformational change mm -hmm. that then allows the HIV to interact with a second receptor on the, on the surface known as a co-receptor. And there are two varieties that it can come in depending on the CD4 cell type, CCR5 and CXCR4. So both of them, they're not absolutely essential for the virus, but it is able to help uh, the CD4 cells recognize uh, chemical signals that tell where the pathogens are inside of the environment. Uh, okay. And I guess then what happens? All right. So basically after, after that, what happens is that once you initially recognize the host, you undergo a complex series of events known as fusion. So <laughs> basically what fusion is, is that uh, the HIV cell membrane, the envelope, is continuous then with the CD4 cell membrane. Mm -hmm. And basically what that allows it to do is that the capsid that hosts the two genome elements inside of it is then released inside of the cytoplasm. And eventually this capsid is then degraded and what is released then is that there are two RNA molecules. Mm -hmm. One of the things in order to make new viruses is that this RNA needs to then be made into DNA. And so now, if you remember the central dogma, what does RNA go into DNA? No. No, it doesn't, right? So basically HIV has invented or created, brought along with it, a protein known as reverse transcriptase, which I've denoted here in purple. And so basically what reverse transcriptase does is that it then creates this RNA and turns it into DNA. And that DNA then is transported inside of the nucleus mm -hmm. and with the help of this red protein that it also brings along with it known as integrase it as the name implies basically integrates that piece of dna oh, yeah. inside of the genome and so at this point the hiv hiv dna is no is not distinguishable from any other dna inside of the host cell and so this is what is establishes a period known as latency, where HIV can basically hang out in there while, there's, while the host cell is living. And, wow. it, and latency can be established for almost up to 10 years wow. in some cases. However, uh, one of the things that is then activated after that is that this is then translation, which basically now we start to take advantage of the host cell machinery uh, to make the actual HIV viruses. Transcription is the conversion of DNA into RNA, which is actually the which is actually the HIV genome. And so what I represent here is these pieces of RNA, which is then made from the DNA and then it's transported out inside of the cytoplasm like uh, this. Okay. So one of the cool things about this HIV genome, however, or this piece of RNA, is that normally when we think about eukaryotic translation, we think of it as the mRNA produces one, one protein from one gene. Mm -hmm. Now, this piece of mRNA is actually a product of nine genes, and it, and it can actually produce up to 15 proteins. Wow. So it's, 
So it produces what is known as a polyprotein, aka proteins that are covalently linked together that can then be divided up, and then each one of those proteins have different functions. Oh, so polyproteins are quite rare. They are quite rare inside of the human genome. Yes, that's correct. So this is a unique feature of this is a fairly unique feature of the HIV virus itself. Oh wow. So then the next step then is now that it's made the RNA, the next step would it then be to do what? To make these polyproteins? Yeah, that's exactly right. So one of the things is that it uses the host cell ribosomes, right, which is then allows it to make proteins. And so uh, most of the proteins that are made are what are known as structural proteins, aka because the virus is mostly contain contains mostly uh, this like space this that like encompass that encloses this like RNA genome, mm -hmm. it needs a lot of structural proteins to oh, to create that. So that's what we have here. So there are four structural polyproteins that are made, and they're made in fairly high quantities. And so basically, what happens is that these structural proteins start to assemble together and they start to bind to the cell membrane. Um, and so basically what that is, is then eventually enough of them conglo conglomerate together that we start to create what is known as a bud. Right? And so this bud is able to then house two, mole two molecules of RNA that it then puts inside of a genome. Another thing just to note about the presence of the polyprotein is that you can also, in addition to creating just the structural proteins, you can create up to 15 proteins as well, 15 polyproteins that basically have different functions. And it helps the, and it helps the HIV to not only stimulate further transcription, but also to uh, downregulate the host cellular machinery, uh, like host immune defenses, as well as to help with this budding process. So what exactly is the importance of downregulating? Yeah, so the idea then is that uh, these CD4 receptors can also help present these parts of the HIV on it. Um, and so then you don't want to elicit an immune response against um, these, against HIV and kill the cell before it's already butted out. I see. Yeah. So after it incorporates this RNA genome, it also incorporates a, another polyprotein that is known as the gag pol polyprotein. So gag are the four structural proteins right here. Mm -hmm. And then the polymerase is, the pol portion is composed of three, of three molecules, one which is the integrase and the reverse transcriptase, which we've already talked about before. Right. The other one that is important in all of this is going to be this protease here, which basically will help to cleave all the different proteins off of this polyprotein and then help to assemble the mature virus. Mm -hmm. So when enough structural proteins assemble, it can then allow the cell to bud off from the membrane. And so from there, so from there, this protease is really important to then be able to cleave all of the different components that are inside of this immature virus. And basically what that creates then is a fully mature virus that we just started with. Oh, and this is the exact same thing as at the beginning, right? Exactly. So this is so this is exact. So this can be used to infect new cells. And in fact, from the one virion that we started with, we can create tens to hundreds to even thousands of virions per cell that is infected with this HIV initially. And is this how? So I always hear about HIV and then AIDS. Is this? Is this kind of what happens? Yeah, so that's exactly right. So HIV and AIDS are actually caused by the same virus, right? So it's caused by this HIV virus. So HIV describes the infection, AIDS describes the uh, clinical, like the clinical end stage manifestation of it. Uh -huh. So basically what AIDS is, is that it, as viruses are budding out, after a certain time period, when enough viruses are budded out, these CD4 cells are killed. And so, now, if you remember, these CD4 cells are really important for immune, immune defenses, right? Mm -hmm. And so then, therefore, if you're killing a whole bunch of these, then you're less able to fight off an immune infection. And so that's usually how people die of AIDS. So uh, the clinical manifestation of AIDS is basically when CD4 cell counts have reached below a certain level.